Hi, this is Adam from Metal Wani, and we have Shannon Larkin, the drummer from Godsmack. Good afternoon, sir. Howdy. That's another great word that gets underused, I think. In it's the a plush word. It's quite plush. Plush. That's another great word as well. You're just coming out with them off the mark. You played a download festival before. How's the experience of playing here as compared to, say, Wacken or uh, in Europe or Rockin' the Range in the US? How does it compare? Uh, you know, it, there's a lot of uh, camaraderie backstage, it seems like, uh, here in England. And another thing is the crowd are warriors because the last time we played and this time it's a mud fest. Oh yeah. And I mean no one cares. No. Everybody's just in it, man, for the music. It feels really good. It feels very united. It's a wonderful thing. Your latest record, When Legends Rise, got a fantastic response from, from both media and the fans. How's the bit response been to the fans live to the new material? It's been great. You know, we were, you know, it was a change for us. Our records come uh, uh, four years apart ever since I joined this band 17 years ago, right? And it hasn't been a conscious decision to do it. It's just, it usually takes us a year to, to record and write the record, and then we tour for two years, and then we take some time off, you know? So every four years, it, it, it happens like that. And with the distance between those records, we usually try and do something different so we're not making the same record over and over again, you know. And so this time, and, and Sully's our visionary, it's his band, and he's our leader. He handpicked all of us, you know. We follow, he's our leader, and we follow him and trust him. And he came to us this time with wanting to do a more modern production and, and use these L.A. producer guys that, you know, uh, a lot of the rock bands in America are using now. And so, you know, we all had also turned 50 years old as, as humans. And so we're trying to mature as we get older. And because if anything, we try and keep this band real, right? And so in, in your 50s, you know, metal, particularly hard, hard metal, hard rock, is a young man's game. And it's like sports, you know. If you're Michael Jordan, you're the greatest bas basketball player ever. But once you're past 40, everybody, oh, he's old. And so he retired before he started to look old. And so we're, we're thinking that, you know, we want to try and make our music to where we can represent it on stage without feeling like we're trying to act like kids that yeah. are angry and still pissed off at the world, yeah. which we were 20 years ago, you know? Uh, so it was, a, it was amazing to us to come out with what we felt was quite different sound from, from everything we've done before especially production-wise, and still have our fan base embrace it. I mean, the album feels like a new face for Godsmack. Like you say, it's a new, a new era for the band. The album sounds more fluid, fierce, and fun to listen to. What's the goal behind writing this album compared to, say, 1000 HP, which was rallying death race of muscle riffing and solos? Was it the, what was the goal behind it? Well, we were in a happier place in our lives, particularly Sully, who does all the lyrics. So the lyrics are quite different. They're way more about rebirth than about actually dying, you know. Yeah. And so that's a big difference right there with the tone of the record, you know. Uh, and as far as writing the actual music, this was also uh, a first time that we used outside writers, these L.A. producers. Sure. They also help write, the, craft these songs, you know, that, that have a more commercial aspect, I guess, for the radio, which has always been our friend. So we've always done really good, even with our most heavy music at rock radio in America, which is very important over there. It's a little different than here. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of goes by radio over there, you know? Yeah. And so we figured, you know, if, if these guys are writing hit after hit after hit, so, well, and we didn't, Sully did. He came to us with this idea of using different writers. First time in an over 20 year career. And so, of course, Robbie, Tony, and myself were like, all right, you know, you're our crazy leader. So, but we need to hear some songs. And the first song he brought us that he'd written with someone else, Ron, who ended up, uh, Eric Ron, ended up producing the record because of co-writing this song was Bulletproof. And when we heard it, we heard this modern sound, you know, and modern production, certainly. We'd never had, like, synth synthesizer sounds in our songs before. No. Nah. Like in the verse, you hear that bump, 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 bump. It's a synthesizer. We'd never used any of that. We've always been just a rock band. And so when he played us that song, 
but it still had the toughness and his lyrics are brilliant and we were like wow we could we can represent this and so the the sound drastically changed for the first record that we used outside writers to come in and write with sully you know every other record every other song we've ever written or produced has been by the four guys in this band you know mm-hmm. so that made it a lot different for sure sure and, and some of the songs on the record are perfect for live setting in, in sort of like an anthemic way especially the grooves and choruses written and meant for the live setting was that the plan while the album was being written was it specifically written with playing it live in mind do you think it is a conscious thing we we've always thought about how the songs can be pulled off and represented live and but we're also with that said there's only two songs that we run tape on and it seems like every band we tour with every band I see they have tape running yeah. to where you know to make it sound like the record but we've always been a band you know firstly we're in our 50s so all of our idols Led Zeppelin you know they didn't use tape and so Jimmy Page though would put sometimes 10 guitar tracks on one song but live you got that song and he just picked all the magic parts and they didn't need all those other tracks Jimmy Page was just great and made pick the magic out of all of it that's it the extra element you know to, to, the, yes. to the original song and you got a different version and now you're seeing a live band you know if I want to listen to the CD I'll go home and listen to the CD that's it I'm going to see somebody live don't run tape you know nothing against the bands that do don't get me wrong here sure. but so we kind of pride ourselves on not not running click tracks and tape and all this stuff you know um, and try and so to your original question yes when we're writing we, we picture and rehearse these songs before we record heavily we rehearse a lot so that we can get the feel of the band and how it's going to sound live before we do the layering and put all this crap on there yeah all, all the all the whistles and bells a lot of bands are doing anniversary tours 10 15 20 years etc next year obviously awake is uh, 20 years uh, passing now is there any discussions perhaps maybe doing an anniversary tour well, we, we, we crossed the 20 year, the first album came out in 98. So 2008 was actually the 20 year anniversary. So we thought about going out and doing the first record in its entirety. You know how bands do. Sure. And then we had just put out the new record. I mean, yeah, 2018, right. 2018, not 2008. 2018 was the 20 year anniversary. And that's when Legends came out. And so we're like, we were we were torn we didn't want to go out and do a tour for the first record and celebrate this 20 year thing when we felt we made this new record that is a rebirth and a new sound and a new direction for us to follow for the second part of our career like you were too busy looking ahead yes rather than looking in the past and the same thing's happening now with the awake thing people are saying you know the awake's 20 year anniversary well we have this new record we're still out touring on and we want to tour well into 2020 on this you know sure. and so Maybe a 25-year anniversary. <laughs> hey, who knows? Let's let's, let's yeah. hope for that, shall we? Now, legendary acts such as Iron Maiden, Kiss, Judas Priest. Well, you know, we're looking at perhaps sometime in the not too distant future for them to retire. What bands do you think will replace them as headlines for festivals like this? Well, I'd like to think we have a chance. Um, I know Foo Fighters are already there. They're the next uh, for metal bands. You know, Slipknot is still around. They should be around for a while. Um, Slayer's gone. Uh, that's a great question, man. It's hard to predict the future. You know, you have new bands coming up like Greta Van Fleet, who are using classic rock influence, which I love. And they could be headliners someday. Um, you have bands like Hailstorm now that are coming up. Hailstorm, they're headlining the second stage. They could move up to a headliner in five years, who knows? It's a very exciting time to be in rock and roll. It is, and that's a great question, man. That's a good question. After download, what's next for Godsmack? What are you doing straight after here? After this? Yeah. Uh, we go back to America, have six days off, <laughs> right back out, starting in Vegas, and uh, doing America. Then we take, we get an actual break for the first time since December, wow. which is a five week break. And that's not completely true. We are doing some festival fly ins in America during that break, but we at least get to be home for five to six weeks. 
and uh, and then we go back out in America with Hailstorm and we're gonna finish the year out and then come back to Europe Ah, oh, well we look forward to that I have to say Shannon it's been a pleasure and a privilege to meet you and to oh, speak to you. you thank you bless you sir thank you very thank much you. thanks thank for joining us great interview